Hey everybody, welcome to this week's live chat. I'm Angela Walters and we're gonna be talking about thread tension issues. I have my coffee, I have my notes. I've been chatting with some of you before we started, answering some questions and I think, I hope that you find today's live chat um, informative and helpful. I will say I have been looking forward to this chat today. It's been a little bit of a rough morning. All I have to say is quadratic equations. I've been trying to help my uh, kids with schoolwork. I would much rather talk about quilting and thread tension issues. So what I'm gonna do today is kind of talk about the basics of tension and, and give you some suggestions on how to fix it. The good news is when you're having tension problems, it's probably one small issue. The bad news is, is that it could be like one of a hundred different issues. So I'm gonna help give you some guidelines and things to think about, things to work through, and hopefully you can apply those when you're having thread problems. First, I wanna say that we do weekly giveaways here and Janine Frazier won last week's giveaway. So congratulations, Janine. I've already emailed her and she's emailed me back. She won the free pattern in the scrap bag and today's giveaway is going to be for a quilt love kit. So if you watched the um, Midnight Quilter episode on Wednesday, we saw, or yesterday, we saw I was uh, celebrating the quilt season in our life, and that kit is the giveaway prize. You can check out the link in the description box below, and that's how you'll enter. Also in the description box, you'll find a link to a downloadable PDF of what I'm showing you today. So I know that it's hard to listen to me rattle on and on without something to refer to later. So definitely go check that out, download it later on, and you can have that kind of as a is a little helpful tool for you. Also, you can find links to the products I'm talking about and um, anything else that you need. If you like this video or you find it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. That will help other quilters find it as well. And I will be kind of bouncing back and forth between the presentation and I'll just poke in, peek in on the chat every once in a while just to see if there's any questions. But it's really hard to address all of those to catch them all. So if I don't get to it, just leave it in the comments after the video is done or after the chat is done and I'll try to come back on later and add the answers there. Um, but I do have lists, like lists and lists of questions that people have asked on my Facebook page and on the live chat. So lots of stuff to cover. We're gonna jump right into it. So one second, let's get over to the slideshow. Okay, so let's talk about thread tension issues. And before we even talk about um, problems and common causes, we're gonna talk about the three things that make up tension or the three parts to good tension. We're gonna talk about thread, needles and adjustments. So those are the three main things that we're really going to talk about. So the first thing is going to be thread. Now I did a whole live chat about thread a couple weeks ago. You can find that on my YouTube channel and I talk about the different st types of thread and the different styles and the most important thing though that I stressed in that live chat was that you have to use quality thread. If you skimp on anything else just don't do it on thread. The thing is Machine quilting is putting stress on that thread in so many different directions that um, sometimes thread that's not as quality will have a really hard time keeping up. You'll also see issues like lint, more lint, and more thread shreddage and breakage. So we're thinking about the machine quilting process. It's much different than sewing, right? When we're sewing, those feed dogs are pulling the, uh, the fabric through. The thread's only moving in one direction, but as soon as we start going in all those different directions, we're adding that additional stress. So you definitely want the quality thread for the faster quilting and the stress of moving in all different directions. Now, in that chat, I talked about there really is no one thread you should use as long as it's quality. And we talked about all the different kinds of threads there are. And if you remember that, I love talking about threads um, almost as much as quilting with them. But the thing is, if you want some kind of guideline, I usually tell, or I tell new quilters, that they're usually better off using a 40 or a 50 weight thread. So this would be like Aurifil 50 weight or So Fine, which is a poly thread from uh, Superior or Glide, which is a 40 weight. The reason I think that's the sweet spot is that it's strong enough to handle machine quilting, but it's still thin enough that it blends in a little bit to your quilt. When we're quilting for the first time, sometimes we don't wanna see all the designs we're quilting. So even though there's some really cool threads out on the market, if you're newer to machine quilting, maybe that's not where you start. Start right in the 40 to 50 weight, and then as you get comfortable with the machine quilting process, then you can venture out. And it was great because um, Steffi asked on the chat, she said, well, I wanna I do fine with my 40 or 50 weight. I wanna use some thinner threads, but I'm nervous, right? So the different weight threads, they go you know, from 40, 50, 60, 80, all the way up to 100. Well, instead of skipping right to the 100, I suggested maybe you go to a 60 weight and then maybe you go to an 80 weight, like bo bottom line or something like that. And then, tr you know, kind of tiptoe into it. Um, but definitely if you're newer to machine quilting, this is what I would suggest. 
But I will say I'm only the expert of my opinion, so um, that's just me. Now there's also other things that you have to consider when you're using different kinds of threads. A lot of questions have came in about metallic thread or issues with that specialty thread. Sometimes you're just gonna have to quilt, uh, quilt slower. Doesn't matter how good the thread is, it's not made to withstand that, that heavy, that fast quilting. This would be like your metallic thread, your monopoly, which is the kind of clear thread, It'd be something like that. Um, or you'll have to have looser tension with those threads as well. So just know that sometimes the quality thread can still give you trouble, which I'm sure some of you know, but there are adjustments that you can make for that. All right, so that's a pretty quick overview because, you know, thread, we've already talked about it. As long as you're using quality and sticking within a good weight, you're going to be fine. Uh, before we move on to the type and size of needle, Will will say uh, there was a great question that came through on the chat that said, are there thread combos I should avoid for tension issues? You can use any weight or type thread in the top with any weight or type thread in the bobbin. You're just going to have to make adjustments and we'll talk about that. So there really isn't any to avoid once you get comfortable with tension and you'll be able to use any kind of combination that you want, which is fun and kind of overwhelming sometimes. Okay, part two, which is going to, we're going to go into a little bit more detail here, is using the correct size and type of needle. That needle is performing a very important function. It's taking the thread down and bringing it back up very quickly while you're moving the fabric or the machine. And so having the correct needle will really help a lot. So we're going to talk about sewing machine needles and long arms, but first let's talk about the, the parts of a needle. I'm kind of a dork or a geek. I love knowing these things. And it really helps me understand why I need to do things if I understand why it is that way. So we're learning about the parts of the needle so we know how to make adjustments. So here is a needle that we're looking at, your basic kind of needle. The eye of the needle is obviously where the thread pulls through um, in, at, the, at the bottom of the needle. But different size needles have different size eyes for different size threads. Okay, so the size of the needle you use depends on the thread that you're using question I'm asked all the time, what size needle do you use? It's always like, well, it depends on the kind of thread I'm using. So that eye is going to change size depending on the thread. The point is also important. So the point is like where it really gets specific. There's ballpoint needles. Those are great for more knits, like if you're doing a t-shirt quilt. And I know some long armors love to use ballpoint for everything. There's also sharp needles. And those are great for woven fabrics. So that's usually what you see in machine quilting. Um, but there, sometimes they're a hybrid of both. The superior top stitch needles, which we'll talk about here in a second, they're, they're like a, a little bit of a ball sharp. They're not totally sharp, not totally ball. So the point does matter um, for what, how you're using it. For the most part, I would go with a sharp needle, but you could always try the ball point. Here's a thing that shocked me, though, when I was learning about this. There, there's a groove in the front of the needle. The groove's job is to protect the thread as it's going through the fabric. So it kind of gives it a little shelter so it doesn't have friction with the fabric and helps keep that thread from shredding. This is important as well because depending on the size of the needle, that groove is going to be bigger or smaller. So if you think about this, you could think, well, if I'm using a thin thread, shouldn't I just use the biggest eye needle that I have? Well, not necessarily because that groove is going to fit that thread nicely and help guide it through. So that's why we use the correct size needle for the type of thread, regardless if it's bigger than the thread we're using. If that doesn't make sense, just pretend I didn't say that. <laughs> and then we have the scarf. So the scarf, its job is to give a little bit of space between the back of the needle and the thread because that hook is coming through and grabbing it. And so if there wasn't that scarf, there would be no way for it to grab that thread you would have skip stitches. And for those of you that have a long arm with the round shank and have ever put your needle in backwards, maybe you have seen this happen as well. So those are the different parts of the needle that we're messing with or dealing with. <clears throat> so let's talk about sewing machine needles. So when you're quilting on a sewing machine, I always suggest uh, the Superior Titanium Needles. This is one of the packages that they come in. And this is a great graphic from Superior Threads. And I will stop right here and just say a lot of the information that I'm sharing with you is right off of Superior Threads website. So they have great educational resources, so check out their website for all that. But if you look at um, the needle eye size, so on the right, it's showing you a universal needle and a top stitch needle. Well, that eye is a little bit bigger, it's elongated, and that's gonna give it the thread more room to move without shredding, right? We want that eye to deliver the thread perfectly, but not too tight because we'll get shredding. And so usually if I, if somebody says my thread is shredding, 
sometimes that could be the case that it's too small. And then you can see on the left the different sizes of needles depending on you, that you would use depending on the thread. So you have the very top, which is a 60, and the very bottom, which is 100. So each package will tell you what size needles, they, uh, uh, each package tells you what kind of thread it works with. But just know that this is why I love those needles. Plus, they're titanium coated, so they're stronger. They can handle the um, pressure of machine quilting. Because here's what happens, or what I've seen in my classes, especially on a sewing machine. When you're newer to machine quilting, maybe you're not pushing quite right, or maybe you're quilting really slow, but you're pushing hard and you're putting tension on that needle. What could happen is you can't actually bend the needle, and it might not even look like it's bent, but it might bend it just enough that it's not catching that thread. So this is gonna help stand up to sometimes our, our pushing of the fabric. So love the top stitch needles. Again, it's, I don't think they're that expensive. I think they're definitely worth, definitely worth it. That's what I use all the time. And I use it for piecing too. I just use them all the time. Okay, so here's a little bit of a guide um, that Superior Threads, again, just right from their site, kind of tells you the different size needles for the different size threads. And what I want to point out is there's no standard thread weight across the industry. There's not like a gold standard or a standard weight. So a 50 weight cotton might be a little thicker than a 50 weight poly, but this is going to give you a gauge or something to follow. Um, I know that Superior Threads, they have uh, sampler packs, which we sell on the website too. It's a really good option because it has one of each needle and you can try it. Um, but usually the 90 or the 80 is where most people are hanging out, right? Because that's what I suggest, the 80 or, or the 50 or the 40 weight. But if you're having trouble, like let's say you're working with um, 60 weight thread, and that's something I was chatting with somebody before. I said, oh, maybe try a 70 or a 60. Because those, actually I think I told her 80 or 70, she was using a 90. Because um, shredding could be a, an example of the thread running up against the eye of the needle. Not always, but sometimes. Okay, let's talk about long arm needles. I'm going to make it easy for you. If you have a long arm, just use whatever kind of needle your manufacturer suggests. I could go into all the things about the multi-direction and the MR and all that. Just, just see what they suggest and then pick the size depending on the thread that you're using. So this is a thread guide for Handy Quilter. That's the machine um, that I use. I'm also a Handy Quilter dealer, so I'm always going to go there for their advice. Um, but what I want to show you is if you look at the size and the threads, there's a lot of overlap. If I wanted to use a 60 weight thread, it, I could use a 12 or a 14 or a 16. That's a lot of variety. Well, that's because there's a lot of variety in threads. So I'm going to start with 16, and if I see um, issues, I, I might switch to a 14. So sometimes you might find that, oh, this thread, this needle works great with this thread. Um, just know that there is a little bit of overlap, but that's just because of the different uh, standard or different types of threads. So depending on the type of thread you're using, you'll use a different size needle. Again, this is very important because, you know, we need that eye to be big enough for the thread and we need the groove to fit the thread so that it protects it as it's going through the quilt. So regardless, just use what your manufacturer tells you to use. Okay, so what happens though if you don't use the right type or size of needle? So here are some common frustrations that you might see. First, we already said your, the wrong size needle can result in shredding or breaking, right? Because that thread is going through the fabric, it's causing friction, and eventually it's fraying it. Uh, the fact is that thread is going down and getting yanked back up, and it's just gonna add a little bit of friction. It doesn't take much to throw it all off. So if you notice breaking or snapping, so that's a good different, like if it's snapping at the needle, it could be the wrong size needle, but it most usually is a needle isn't in correctly, is not placed correctly if you're on a long arm, it's too much to one side, or it could be that your top tension is too tight. Usually what you'll see with the needles that are smaller or too small, you'll see shredding, and you'll see shredding at the needle. So if you see shredding somewhere else, if it's shredding up by your bobbin or by your spool of thread, it might not be at the needle. So where it's shredding is a good indicator of where to look too. Um, so you can use that. And I, I do want to say, I don't have a degree in any of this. This is just my experience, but I have made a lot of tension mistakes. And so I feel like I have a lot of life experience to share there. Um, you can also have skip stitches. So this is especially for those of you in long arms. So one of the great things about quilting on a sewing machine is our needles have a flat shank. So they only go in one way. No guesswork, right? Just put it in, tighten it up. Long arms have a round shank, which means we can put it in backwards. Now, this is a good thing. 
most long arms have use round shaped needles, not, maybe not all of them. Um, but here's a good thing. The reason it's round is so that we can make adjustments to where that eye is at. And sometimes we can tweak it to one side just a bit to ease that thread through the needle. Um, but if you're getting skip stitches, it could be that your needle is in backwards or it's just not all the way up, right? So remember that shank, that's what's grabbing that thread, right? So if it's not grab, able to grab that thread, then th that could happen there. Um, sometimes it won't show up right away. So you could put the needle in backwards and maybe it does take a few stitches. It depends on the direction you're quilting. Sometimes if you're quilting toward yourself, it does give enough gap to take it up, but you'll notice real quickly if it's in backwards because you won't be taking any stitches. Um, bent or dull needles can also cause tension issues. So if you hit anything, if you hit in here like a funk, a, a bulky seam, if you hit a ruler, it's probably a good idea just to go ahead and change your needles. It, your needle. It might look sharp, it might look fine, but it might not be fine. Um, or if you've had your needle on for a while and it's, you know, you're not getting the best tension, go ahead and switch it out. Usually, uh, you know, how often you should change your needles is up to you. Handy Quilter suggests every quilt, but it really depends on how much quilting you're doing and how big the quilt is. If you're hearing a pop, pop, pop sound, what it's doing is it's piercing the fabric, not dividing those um, fibers. So that probably needs, mean, means you need to replace it as well. So you gotta wanna watch out for that. So using the right kind of needle and the right size. So if you use quality thread and the correct size needle for it, chances are you're already two thirds of the way to good tension. So that will get you there. But now let's talk about adjustment. And this is where we're gonna see how do you know which way to adjust and what tension is even what it is. So um, I'm super excited because I'm going to be really dorky and show you some stitch formation graphs. Okay, so this is how a stitch is formed. We have our top thread going through our eye of a needle. We have our bobbin thread. And as a thread goes down, it creates this loop, which you see, thanks to that little um, scarf. And that hook is going to grab it and hold it while it pulls it up. So where those threads join is kind of like the little knot that it makes. And you can see this on the graphic on that stitch to the left of the needle. So that knot, where those join, we want that to be in the middle of the quilt sandwich. That's considered good tension, right? So if that knot is above or below, that's bad tension. Well, that doesn't give us a whole lot of room, does it? There's not a whole lot of, um, um, you know, error, room for error there. So what we need to do is see where that tug of war is going and make adjustments accordingly. Okay, so let's look at this on the top. Now these are from Handy Quilter as well, but if I'm looking at the top thread, at the top of the quilt, and I see the bottom, this is my bottom thread, my bottom thread coming up, that means one of two things. My top thread is too tight or my bottom thread is too loose, right? So something needs to be adjusted so that it goes back into the quilt sandwich. So if you're seeing the bottom thread on the top, Usually it just means you need to loosen your top thread, okay? Because we just want to ease it down a little bit until it gets that center. But most often, this is what gets us, we're quilting along, it looks great, and then it rolls around the back of the long arm, or we look underneath and it's like ugh, railroad tracks, right? Where we're seeing that top thread on the bottom. So the bottom is pulling too tight or the top is too loose. Usually that means I just need to tighten it up a little bit. So those adjustments that we're making is gonna help that knot fall where it needs to, which is in the middle of the quilt. So that's the mechanics of it, but let's talk about what this actually looks like. So let's say your tension is great, and then all of a sudden it's not, which seems to happen. You're like, I was quilting just fine. Well, there are things that can affect thread tension, or there's things that will make, you, make it necessary to adjust your tension. So first, the fabric. So if you've ever tried quilting with batiks, you might have noticed having tension issues with that when it was totally fine before. So the more densely woven the fabric, the more friction on the thread. I mean, think about it. If, there's, if it's more woven, it's harder for that thread to get through. It slows it down a little bit, harder for the needle to get through, slows it down a bit, and it's also providing more friction. So if I'm closing on a batik or a batik quilt on my long arm, I'm gonna make the sandwich a little bit looser, or my quilt a little bit looser. I'm gonna make sure I have a brand new needle, and I'm gonna quilt just a little bit slower. And it also depends if that's a true batik or if it's just something that looks like a batik. We're talking about the weave, not the actual art technique of it. Um, looser weave fabrics have less friction. I love, love quilting linen. Super easy, no problem, because it's such a looser weave that I don't usually have any friction on the thread. Um, now it does shift a little bit more, so that's a different issue, but as far as tension goes, definitely not the case. 
All right, thread type. So obviously, if I'm changing from a 50 weight thread to a 60 weight thread, I'm probably gonna have to make some adjustments. And we're gonna talk about that here in a second. But um, one thing I wanna say is if you've only changed a thread and it's only a little bit different, you shouldn't have to make a lot of adjustments. So keep that in mind. If you keep making adjustments and it's not doing anything, that means that's probably not the issue. Quilting can also do it as well. So if I am um, quilting with rulers, so that is a question that came up a lot, a lot, a lot. Uh, I'm doing fine free motion and then I'm quilting with a ruler and now the tension is off. Well, it could mean that I need to make a slight adjustment because I'm gonna be moving the quilt differently than I would with free motion. Maybe I'm placing more pressure on the ruler side or maybe I'm not moving as smoothly. This could also be for those of you that have computerized long arms um, and you've been computerized quilting, no problem. Then you go to free motion quilting and you notice the tension is a little off. Sometimes you have to make adjustments between the two just because your quilting is different. Um, and so sh again, it shouldn't be a lot, but sometimes it does make it necessary to do that. And also batting. This is a great question that came up on the Facebook group. She was using a high loft batting, really puffy or two layers, you know, what kind of adjustments need to be made? Well, I might have to loosen the tension just a bit. Um, but again, these are not gonna be drastic changes, but just know that if any of these change, it can change the, um, the need to, to adjust the tension. Okay, so now you've decided your tension is bad or it's become very obvious looking at your quilt sandwich. Um, and I will say that this is just part of the learning curve, all right? So before we get into adjusting it, oh, it just, it's part of the, it's part of the deal. Um, when I teach classes, or when I would, I haven't taught a class in a year, but when I would teach classes, especially on sewing machines, people would say, have questions about tension. And I'd say, we're not even gonna talk about it till the end. Because sometimes tension problems take care of themselves as you get more comfortable with quilting. So as long as, you know, if it's a sample piece and you're just practicing, just know that it works itself out. I also say that as you get more comfortable with quilting, all of a sudden it just clicks and it's not a problem anymore, usually. Um, I remember in the beginning, oh my gosh, I would cry to my husband about once a month, this piece of junk, I can't do it, it's shredding threads. And I just, I felt like I had no idea what caused it and no idea how to fix it. And so it was just very, very frustrating. And I tell any of my new long arm owners, I'm like, look, you're probably, you're good for about three good freakouts, right? Just call me and we'll talk you down. Uh, just know that it's normal, but you'll work through it and it, it will definitely get easier the more comfortable you get with the quilting process. Okay. You know there's a problem, we need to fix it, but before you do anything, anything, check the following. You wanna make sure your machine is threaded correctly. Here's what you don't wanna do. You don't wanna try fixing a problem that's not a problem, only to fix the problem and now have a new problem to fix. So for instance, on my long arm, I need to make sure my thread is through my tension discs, right? It's very important. But if it's not and I start adjusting tension, it's not gonna do anything for the thread. And by the time I figure that out, now I gotta adjust the tension back to where it was. So always check to make sure it's threaded correctly. Um, even if that means unthreading it and doing it again. Make sure your bobbin is wound correctly. So this is very important as well. We're gonna talk about bobbin tension here in a second, but bobbin tension is like the foundation of the stitch. So if you have, if you're winding your own bobbins, make sure that they're tightly wound, that they're evenly filled, right? If it's like bulging to one side, not the other, that means it probably wasn't wound correctly and just make sure that it's wound right. Because if your bobbin isn't wound correctly, it's gonna drive you insane. You'll make adjustments based on where it's at at that moment, only to know like here in a couple of feet, it might be different. So if you have a bobbin that's not wound correctly, save yourself the heartache and just unwind it and wind a new one. Um, and that's the same on a sewing machine or a long arm. And then make sure your needle is inserted correctly. So I always tell, you know, when I'm talking people through stuff, especially my owners, I'm like, I know it sounds basic, but just trust me, it, it, it's worth checking. It's like when, you know, you call the computer people, like, is it plugged in? You're like, of course it's plugged in. You know, it's just the basic things that you need to check. So check that. All right, so now you're ready to start adjusting. You're sure it's right. First, you'll adjust the bobbin tension if applicable. So some machines, most long arms and some sewing machines have the capability to adjust the bobbin tension. If you don't have the ability to adjust the bobbin tension, perfect, that's one less variable that you have to worry about. Do make sure though it's cleaned out and there's no lint in there. Um, if you can adjust the bobbin tension though, you want to have it set to where it's pulling smoothly, it's nice and not too tight or not too loose, um, but because what's going to happen is now I'll have to make all my adjustments on top. If I get my bobbin set where it needs to be, I can make all the adjustments on the top and this is so important because that's what I was doing wrong all those years ago. I would loosen my bobbin tension and then loosen my top tension. 
Well, what's happening now? It's just moving the same way. It's the same problem, right? I'm counteracting each other. So once I get that bobbin tension set, then that, I'm just gonna leave it alone. And then the only time you really should have to change that bobbin tension is if you change types of threads in the bobbin. So um, again, not all machines have that capability, but make, if you do, just make sure that it's set correctly. And then you don't have to mess with it unless you change types of thread. That's why I think it's good to hang out in the 40 or 50 weight, always stick with that same weight of thread, and then you can start making adjustments and, and adjusting your bobbin tension. Okay, now I'm gonna make sure my uh, bobbin tension is adjusted. I wanna say small adjustments, teeny adjustments. A, a adjustment on the bobbin, like even one degree, is like a quarter of a turn on the top, or it's like adjusting a lot more on the top, so you don't have to adjust it a lot. So little bits, make sure it pulls out smoothly, I mean, if I can hold the thread and swing it around, that's too tight. Or if it won't stand up on its own, then that means it's too loose. And then make small adjustments and test it. Now I can make adjustments to my top thread. So you only have to adjust the bobbin thread if you change threads. If it's been the same this whole time, just check the bobbin and make sure it's correct. Now we can make adjustments to our top thread. So double check that the machine is threaded correctly. Can you tell how important this is? Oh, I just want to save you the heartache. Take two seconds and double check it. Um, adjust and then test, adjust and then test, right? So if, let's, let's do a hypothetical situation. I have now put a new thread in and I'm getting those railroad tracks, right? I'm seeing the top thread on the bottom. This sucks. And of course I didn't catch it in time because I didn't check. So I not only do I have to take out the quilting, but I need to figure out what happened. So what I'm gonna do if my bottom thread is, or my top thread's on the bottom, I can do one of two things. I can adjust my bobbin thread or I can adjust my top thread. But we know that I wanna just adjust the top. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tighten that top thread. I'm gonna go about a quarter to a half of a turn, then test. Quarter to a half a turn, then test. Or on your sewing machine, a little bit, right? We're just making those little adjustments. If I've adjusted it a few times and nothing is changing, that means it's probably not the problem. You should, see, you should start to see some kind of difference, whether it's good or bad. So that's why we're adjusting in little bits. I don't want to, you know, crank it from one to 10 on my sewing machine and then hope it works because I'm gonna go in little, little increments and test how it's going. And I'm gonna keep doing that until the threads meet in the center. And then voila, you have great tension. Doesn't it sound wonderful? <sighs> Except we know that it doesn't always work out that way. So let's talk about adjusting uh, thread tension on your long arm. On your long arm, you wanna make sure that the thread is in between the tension discs. Now, I'm not, I don't know enough about all the long arms out there, but most long arms have that tension disc assembly. And it's basically two discs that hold onto the thread and provide tension. So the same on a sewing machine, you just don't see them on the sewing machine, they're usually inside. So not all the time, sometimes. So I'm gonna make adjustments on those tension discs to loosen or tighten that top thread. And that's what's gonna make it tighter or looser depending on um, what I need it to do. I'm gonna make sure it's through those tension discs first, and then I'm gonna make those quarter to half turns on the knobs. Again, testing and adjusting, testing and adjusting. Now, sewing machines are a little bit different because sometimes they have the auto setting, sometimes they have this other thing. Um, again, you wanna make sure it's threaded correctly. Then I, this came right off of Superior's threads because uh, I was thinking, I don't know how to explain what they should do on a sewing machine. So basically it talks about, you know, Auto isn't always the best. I mean, if it works, that's great, but sometimes you have to go, go off of there and maybe go up or down depending on the kind of thread. Don't be afraid to make adjustments on it, um, but just make a little adjustments at a time and kind of always have an idea if it's getting better or worse. So adjusting that top thread until hopefully it falls in there. Um, one great resource for sewing machines on, Handy, or on Superior's website, Superior Threads, they have a machine thread reference guide. You can check that out. So just go to their website and, and um, do a search on it. If you look at that top line, I know it's small, but it tells you the type of thread, the weight, but over at the very end, it gives you a recommended top tension. So that could be a really good gauge for you to help give you a starting point for those types of threads. Even if you're not using Art Studio colors, if it's a 40 weight polyester thread, then you can also try that, that setting. That is one nice thing about sewing machines that you have those lines on there, those references to help you. So you might find that um, beneficial. Check it out. Okay, so you could have good tension, proper tension, but not a good stitch. And it seems kind of crazy, doesn't it? You have good tension, but not a good stitch. Again, tension is just when that thread's in the middle. If my bobbin thread is super loose, that means my top thread has to be loose as well so that it meets in the center. 
So if it's too loose or too tight, then I'll get different issues. So the first one, if I have both tensions too tight, well, it'll still meet in the center, but I'll get puckering or thread shredding or thread breakage. This is very common. So when people say to me, um, oh, my thread keeps breaking, but as soon as I adjust it, it shows up on the bobbin or it, it, it comes, the tension comes off. I can't adjust it at all. Well, they're both so tight. They're both pulling so hard. We just need to ease them both. So it might seem counterintuitive. That means I probably need to make a little adjustments on the top and bottom. I'm gonna check that bottom thread. If it feels like it's really loose or it's not, again, checking to make sure the bobbin's wound correctly, um, I might make a slight adjustment on that. Same if, it's, if they're both too loose. If they're both too loose, well, they're still in the center, but I'll get these loose, undefined stitches. And what we really want is a nice defined stitch and I almost want a little hole on each side so I can see through the quilt. Not necessarily, but I want a defined stitch. You want it to be a proper stitch so that it, it holds it together. So just know that good tension does not always mean great stitches. So you gotta find that sweet spot. All right, last little bit, and then we're gonna go through some qu answers, questions, and I'm gonna kind of help troubleshoot. But not all thread issues are tension issues. So again, that's like, oh, what does that mean? Well. People will say to me all the time, my tension went out on my machine. I'm like, okay, well, it's not a part. The tension is just this, but maybe you're having a thread issue. If your thread is breaking or shredding, it could be a needle issue. It could be a tension issue, but it could be something else. It could be a threading issue. It could be a quilting issue. So sometimes adjusting the tension isn't the first thing we need to do, right? That's why we're checking the thread path first and doing all that. Um, another indication of this is if the tension is off intermittently. Okay, so we're gonna play detective with some of these questions. If somebody says, um, Angela, my tension is off, I'm seeing railroad tracks underneath, but only, I'll say, well, where at, all the time? No, just randomly. Well, is it always happening when I'm moving a particular direction? Is it when I'm always going right to left? Is it happening in a certain part of the design? Is it happening in the point of a leaf all the time? Well, that means I'm probably not moving smoothly throughout the whole design. So. If it's not bad all the time, if it's only in certain places, it could be, it could be a tension thing, but most likely it's a different thing. Um, uh, for instance, inconsistent quilting, weak threads could also have something to do with that too. So like if you're not using a quality thread or it's a thread that's been sitting out, you know, in the window and it's, you know, become weak. So just know that sometimes it's not, it's not tension necessarily. That doesn't necessarily make it easier for you, but it just means it might not be tension. Okay. So it's really hard to give you an idea of how to solve problems when it could be a million things, right? So I'm gonna just kind of give you a kind of brief thing. This is what I do and we're just gonna see if it helps, okay? So first thing first, when it's going bad and you're frustrated, just relax and calm down for a second. Sometimes I had to step away from my machine because I get pissed and I start making all these adjustments. Well, now I'm just making more problems to deal with, right? Then I'm going to double check that the machine is threaded correctly and the bobbin is wound correctly. Can you tell how important that is? Super important um, because I wanna make sure that I don't make any adjustments if that's not the problem, right? So if it's seized up somewhere or something like that. Okay, then we have to play detect detective. And it can be frustrating, but this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna think what has changed from then to now. Okay, so it was working fine and now it's not. Something has changed. We just gotta figure out what it is. Sometimes we know what it is, we can deduct what it is. Maybe I dropped the bobbin, maybe a different thread. Sometimes we don't know. Maybe the needle has gotten a little dull, but I don't realize that, right? So you have to kind of start thinking through. Then you're gonna start making changes one at a time. One change, test. Another change, test, right? This is for two reasons. One, it will help you figure out what did eventually fix it. And two, it will make you, keep you from counteracting what you're doing. Again, instead of adjusting the bobbin in the top, you know, I should have only adjusted one and then seen where that, t where that took me. Um, so one at a time. And then keep, if you're newer to machine quilting or it just really is frustrating, keeping track of what you've done and what fixed it can really help. Um, even if a piece of paper that's like, oh, I use this thread, this is what I've done. Another thing this will help you do is when you call and get help from your dealer, you can tell them these are the things I've done. Because sometimes I'm like, I don't know, I just adjusted a bunch of stuff and I don't know what I did. And remember, if you're making adjustments or doing something, it's probably not the issue, right? So if I change the needle and it doesn't help, well, that means it wasn't the needle. Great. Now I have 199 other things to think about, right? 
Did I change out the type of thread? Nope, guess that wasn't the problem, right? I'm playing detective and I'm going through one thing at a time. I know it's frustrating, but you'll definitely work your way through it. So now what I'm gonna do, real quick, is I'm gonna come put my screen down. Um, we're gonna talk about some questions that came up and we're just gonna discuss you know, um, common things you can think about. So again, this is gonna go a little bit longer than normal, but it's fine. Okay, so we're gonna play detective and we're gonna talk through and, and see if we can figure it out. So Ashley asked on Facebook, she said, I, why do I get random loose stitches on her moxie? So that's her long arm. So she's quilting on it in random loose stitches. Okay, that could be a couple, and it's just one random loose stitch on the moxie. Okay, well, are you moving in a particular direction? Is what I would ask if I were talking to her. Um, does it happen in a certain way? Maybe she's in stitch regulator and she's going up and coming back too soon and it doesn't have time to form that next stitch. So that wouldn't necessarily be a tension problem because if it were bad all the time or loose all the time, that would mean that it was a tension problem, right? So it could also be, um, you know, you're thinking it's happening randomly, it's not consistent, so it's something that's changing. It could be the thread. Maybe that thread is getting pulled up somewhere, like as it's unwinding from the spool, maybe it's falling. So maybe a thread net might be helpful for her, especially those thinner threads. So that kind of gives you an idea of the things I would ask. Um, Jan uh, Janice asked a good question. Why does tension change when you rethread your machine with the same type of thread? Okay. If, and I'm assuming this is the same weight, same type, same color. Why would it change? It probably shouldn't, right? It probably means that maybe it didn't get pulled up into those, those um, thread, that tension disc. It could mean that maybe it wasn't threaded quite the same way. Um, so it probably isn't a tension thing. It's something else, what I would say to that. Again, it's hard to know exactly because, you know, I'm not talking to them, but it um, definitely will help you kind of think about the things I'm going to ask if I'm helping somebody through this. Okay, so there was another great question from Almarie. She said, why does the tension go out on my Avante every other bobbin or so? Same design, same bobbins, same thread. Okay, so my first question would be like, well, what is it doing? It's very important. It, tension could be going out. What, does it mean it's, it's up too much to the top, too much to the bottom? Here's one thing to think about, some of these things that we don't maybe don't know or don't realize. Um, on every other bobbin or so, so maybe some, one of her bobbins is bent, maybe. Maybe it's dropped and it's not just quite right. I mean, even it could just be a little bent and it's just gonna randomly cause problems. It could be that her bobbins are winding too full. So another thing, those of you that are winding your own bobbins, that was a question that came up about the glide bobbin uh, winding on the thread. We don't wanna wind them too full because then it won't spin freely inside. Now, most machines have an auto stop thing where it automatically kicks it off, but if you notice the thread is coming out past the bobbin, bulging out a little bit, you need to unwind a little bit before you start. Now, eventually that will work itself out as the bobbin unwind or get, gets emptier, but that's why you would see it randomly in places. Um, it could also be when you oil your machine. So those of you that have machines that need oiled each bobbin, some long arms are like that. I don't know about sewing machines so much. I don't oil mine, so hopefully that's not the case. Um, sometimes if you put too much oil, it's very slippery down there and that bobbin is kind of moving a little differently. And again, that will work itself out with, as the bobbin you know, kind of gets going. But if you're seeing problems at the beginning of a bobbin as opposed to the end, it's gonna give you an indication that there's something like that. It's too wound too full or it's um, you're oiling or something like that. So that's what I would say every other bobbin or so. I would take, if I were her, if I had a bobbin, I would quilt, tension looks good, great. But if I realize that that bobbin isn't tension is bad, I would put it aside just for now and grab another one and see if that does it, right? And kind of deduce from there. Um, it's like a detective game, right? You gotta figure it out. It could also be that maybe your bobbin isn't put in the correct way. So one of the benefits of working with new long arm owners is I've helped troubleshoot a lot of this. And one gal, I remember we were talking through it and we we're like, I'm texting her. I'm like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna have to come to your house. Oh wait, we figured out she was putting her bobbin in backwards sometimes. Not all the time, but just sometimes. And so what's happening is, you know, instead of coming off, you know, one way clockwise, it was going the other way. And so it would be fine and then it wouldn't, it'd be fine and then it wouldn't. Something was changing, we just had to figure out what it was. And so even though it felt like a tension issue, it wasn't because it wasn't doing it all the time. So um, hopefully that makes sense. Another thing is some machines have different quirks, right? So Debbie McClung asked, why do threads shred when moving right to left? She's trying to do some straight line quilting. I'm assuming she's on her long arm. The mechanism of the bobbin case on a long arm is such that it doesn't like to do long straight lines right to left. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. Um, so usually what I tell new long arm owners, just quilt, if you're doing straight lines only, 
left to right, left to right, left to right. Sometimes there's those quirks that we don't realize about the machines that we're using. So that can do it as well. But let's talk about sewing machines. Uh, Laura had a great question too. She said, I have issues going a certain direction with a ruler, but not free motion quilting. Why is that? Okay, so issues, I'm assuming that maybe the stitches aren't quite right or doesn't move correctly. I would be curious to know how long Laura's been quilting with the ruler. If she's newer to it, maybe she's pushing one side harder than the other. Maybe um, she goes one direction better than the other. Free motion's a little different, right? Because I'm just kind of, I don't know, it's a little bit different movement from wor working with a ruler. So I would say, if you're newer to quilting with rulers, just give it some time. I bet it fixes itself. Right? I bet it works itself out. If not, you can also just try to deduce, like, what direction is it? Is it back and forth that gives you trouble? Is it left to right? It could be that maybe you're putting too much tension on that uh, thread. Another thing I'll say is, you know, as you're moving, you want that speed to match your hands. So if the machine is going too slow, but you're pushing too fast, we can get that bent needle thing that I was talking about earlier. So um, definitely think about that. And then Laura asked a great question. Um, Lark asked a great question. Does the direction of the thread matter? So this is one of those finicky things that maybe you don't think of at the beginning, but some threads are cross wound and some threads are regular wound. So specifically, they said they've been having issues with metallic threads. So the direction of the thread doesn't usually matter until you get to the specialty threads, right? Sure, I mean, they say like if it's cross wound, it's better to do it one way or the other. I can't remember what to do. I don't really worry about that. I don't really have problems with that, but it does make a difference when you start getting to those more finicky threads like mylar or metallic thread. So metallic thread is very, um, not fragile, but it's not as strong as other thread. It's decorative, right? So maybe it makes sense to have it where it's coming off the side as opposed to the top. Because what can happen if it's a flatter thread, it kind of makes like a, you know, like toilet paper, it kind of twists. And so it just makes it more trouble. Um, so sometimes that matters, but usually only with, like not all the time, I'm sure there's some people who disagree. I've not had any trouble with that. I use Aurifil and Glide intermittently and I, you know, interchangeably and some other cross bounds. Um, so, but when you get those finicky threads, sometimes getting a vertical or a horizontal spool holder will definitely help. So. Again, let's see, I think that's all the questions I had. Um, there's so much to think about, and I know it can be so frustrating, but the good thing is every time you deal with it, it gets easier and easier, and you realize what it is or, or how to fix it next time. Um, so I, I guess the thing I would say is try not to get too frustrated about it. Try not to get too overwhelmed. I know it can be really frustrating, but think of it as just a detective story that you get to solve and figure out what's happened. Um, and I bet that you'll will get much better at it. And I know that sometimes when I would, back in the day when I would post to the forums, because that was before social media, you had to go to the forum, um, I'd post like, oh, what's going on? It's, it's out, I've done all these things. And they'd always say stuff like, check your needle, check this. I'm like, I've done that, I've done that. But those are the basic things to start with and then to kind of build from there. Um, again, if you're working on a practice piece or you're just trying to get better at machine quilting, sometimes not even worrying about the thread tension until you get to the end will we'll help you out there. Um, one last little pointer that I guess I'd say I forgot to mention that if the tension is really bad, like really bad, sometimes I'll be in a class and she's like, this doesn't look right. I'm like, oh, that's not good. It's all just huge things down here. It's a threading issue, right? There's, some, there's something caught up or the bobbin thread is being seized somewhere. So sometimes it might look like a tension issue, but it's, it's something to get all together differently. So I'm gonna peek over here real quick and see um, what, if there's any questions. I hope today's tips have helped. Um, oh, Marina, her needle broke twice at the start. I stopped there and waited for the tips for today. Okay, if your needle broke, that's not good. Um, if you're on a sewing machine, oh, I don't know. Usually a needle that's breaking for no reason is a, a timing issue on a long arm, so especially on a long arm. So if your needle is breaking, it shouldn't just be breaking. Make sure your bobbin is in correctly as well, all the way. Sometimes it's not in all the way and it hits. Um, and like Lydia said, stop winding my bobbin before it's too full. Notice that when it's too full, I can have problems. Again, yeah, uh, definitely we'll do that. Okay, so lots of things, lots of frustrations, um, but listen, it'll work itself out and it will get much, much easier, I promise. So I know we've went a little bit longer than normal. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please give a thumbs up or leave a comment, tell friends about it. And I'll be back next week with another live chat. They're always on YouTube and they're always on my YouTube channel on Thursdays at 3 p.m. Central. So thanks for coming and I'm wishing you a week full of happy, tension-free quilting. So I'll see you all later. I'll see you all next week. Until then.